Hey, how are you doing guys? Lewis here with Fidevo. Now, unless you've lived under a rock for the past several months, I'm more than sure that you have used Photoshop's generative fill tool or have at least watched videos or read articles about it. It of course can expand a photograph beyond the captured parameters, add elements into the photograph that were not present at the location and swap out a subject for something completely different. This would be a very powerful tool if we could use it in video like for set extensions, matte paintings, and so forth. But I'm here today to tell you that is possible to a certain degree. So if you are brand new to video and you've just been playing around with Photoshop, today I'm gonna to run through the basics of camera tracking inside of After Effects for you to bring over your AI generated imagery, bring it into a video with motion, and it's gonna look seamless at the end. So let's just jump into it. Okay guys, this is the video clip that I'm working with. It's a clip from the Fidevo library of Omaha Beach in Normandy, France. Of course, where the Allied forces launched their D-Day offense. And, you know, perhaps I wouldn't want it to be uh, Normandy in this. Maybe I want it to kind of look like California. And uh, in my head, that means I need like a beach hut by here. And you should note that um, this is a pan shot. Uh, we're panning over to the right. And there are areas by here, such as the, um, the sandbanks, which go out of frame. We're gonna go to the start of the frame because I want the beach hut to appear here. What you're gonna want to do is first of all, make sure that you're working in the highest resolution because we need to obtain a still image from this video clip. First, let's just go to the timeline. Timeline settings is at 1080. Now I know this is a 4K video clip, so I'm gonna go down to 4K. And while we haven't seen it change on screen, so to speak, um, when we obtain the still image, it will now be 4K. So in the case of DaVinci Resolve, I need to go to the color page and select grab still. And then in the gallery, my still image should be there. And then I'll click export. Uh, if you're working in Premiere Pro, there will be a snapshot icon around here, which is a camera icon. You click that for your still image. With the still image obtained, let's go to Photoshop Beta. Now, of course, if you're familiar with generative fill on Photoshop, perhaps this bit is of no use to you. If you are new to the concept, let me just run you through the premise. So you simply just create a selection with the marquee tool or the pen tool, whatever it may be. In this case, as previously noted, I want a beach hut to appear here. So I'm gonna create a selection, select generate fill and type in uh, beach house made from wood and then select generate. Now I do find Photoshop's AI generation to be slightly hit or miss. Uh, so I have a beach hut which was generated earlier in case I don't get what I want from the generations. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so I mean, off the bat, that's that's pretty good. I don't know if it would be worth using that over the one that I had earlier. Let's see what's number two. Number two just is not working. And number three, that's also pretty good. And it's actually kind of cool how they've blended the uh, embankment with the house itself. I'll just turn that off. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with the one that was generated earlier. I really like this, how it merges into the bank and we've got the shadow play on the foreground. So once you're happy with your generated result, of course, you know, it might not be a beach hut, it could be a car or a city skyline or whatever it may be, is you need to turn off the background. And we can see the areas which has been generated by Photoshop. You're gonna to have to assess which areas need to remain and which need to stay. So I don't think that we need this sand here. So what I'm first gonna do is take the pen tool. Or in fact, it would probably just be easy if we take the lasso tool. Just create a selection and I'm probably gonna feather the selection by say three or four. And then Let's rasterize this so I can edit it. And then delete it as such. Now, when I bring that on, we've got a better representation of that area. 
nice. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the background and then save this as a PNG file. With the PNG file created, you're now gonna want to bring the two elements into Adobe After Effects. Now there is no camera track into this scene just yet, so if I click play, this is what's gonna happen. Of course, this is what we do not want to happen because, uh, well, it looks awful. So we're gonna go back and here I'm going to select the MP4, which is the video file, and then select track camera. Now, depending on how long your clip is, how long your composition is and how much movement there is, this can take a little bit of a while. Okay, with the scene analyzed, we now have these dots all over our frame. And these are track points. And you'll notice as I move throughout the composition, these track points stay exactly where they are. When they appear on screen, they do not falter, they do not move. And that's After Effects telling us that it's created a track point within that region and we can apply elements to that track point. So if I go back to the beach hunt, bring that in. And then I'm just gonna turn it off. Okay, so this area is pretty much within that vicinity. So I'm gonna right click and select create null and camera. And now what we have is a 3D camera and a track null. And the null is basically just holding our properties for the camera movement. So now I'm gonna turn the beach hut back on and then I'm gonna turn it into a 3D layer by selecting this button. Then using the pick whip, I'm gonna bring it up and parent it to the null. Now what will happen is as I move forward, the beach hut stays anchored to its natural position. So that's just been preview rendered. Let's click play. That looks pretty solid. It looks like it's part of the scene. However, we do run into an issue because unlike generative AI, which is usually created at the push of a button, when it comes to moving objects, things are never really so simple. And you may notice because it's a 3D object and it's rotating as the camera pans, we can tell it's rotating from the parameters here. The hue of the sky is starting to become dislodged against the hue of the background of the video play. It's fine here, but once it rotates out a bit, actually it becomes a little bit too bright. Now there are two things that we can do, and I recommend in doing them together. The first is to change the blend mode. We're gonna to go to normal and change it to darken. This just keeps the darkened values of this image in the scene while eliminating the brighter values. In this case, the brighter values are just the sky, so it gives us a really nice blend. However, I would also then recommend in taking the pen tool and just going around this area and creating a mask and going down to favorite and say maybe take it to 10 if not 15. Let's just make sure that has not feathered any of the building itself. No, that looks fine. So now we have a really nice blended element into the scene. This beach hut has sort of transformed this normally beach into perhaps somewhere you might see Orange County. I'm making that up. I've never been to California, but this is what I see in my head. Now, I do like to add one more element to scenes where I've added uh, visual effects um, or I've composited elements to a scene, and that is some film grain. So we're gonna go to adjustment layer, quite like adding sugar to a coffee to make it sweeter, the grain does the same. I'm gonna bring this to the adjustment layer, change the viewing mode to final output, and the preset to say Kodak 250D. You can play around with these presets, but for the most part, I don't think it's too important. Now the intensity is slightly too strong. So I'm gonna bring this down to say, 600, and then maybe even change the opacity down to 75. 
But what we now have are these green elements which overlap from the original image, from the original video image, and to the AI generated element. The final scene looks something like this. All right, that looks solid. I'm really happy with the end result. Now, of course, this was just running over this premise on a shot that has a pan to the right. If there's tracking forward or perhaps handheld, they might require a little bit more work than what we've gone through today. But at least now you have the core knowledge in how to achieve this. So if you've enjoyed this, we have been covering a lot of AI tools over the past several months. Be sure to subscribe, stick around, because we'll be talking about a lot more in the future. I've been Lewis with Fedivo, and I will see you guys soon.